When you compose two functions, you apply the first function, and then you apply the second function to the output of the first function. For example, the first function might compute population size from time in years. So its input would be time in years since a certain date, and its output would be number of people in the population. The second function, g, might compute health care costs as a function of population size. So it will take population size as input, and its output will be health care costs. If you put these functions together, that is, compose them, then you'll go all the way from time in years to health care costs. This is your composition, g composed with f. The composition of two functions, written g with a little circle, f of x, is defined as follows. g composed with f of x is g evaluated on f of x. We can think of it schematically in this diagram. f acts on a number x and produces a number f of x. Then g takes that output f of x and produces a new number g of f of x. Our composition of functions, g composed with f, is the function that goes all the way from x to g of f of x. Let's work out some examples where our functions are defined by tables of values. If we want to find g composed with f of 4, by definition, this means g of f of 4. To evaluate this expression, we always work from the inside out. So we start with the x value of 4, and we find f of 4 using the table of values for f of x. When x equals 4, f of x is 7. So we can replace f of 4 with the number 7. Now we need to evaluate g of 7. 7 becomes our new x value in our table of values for g. The x value of 7 corresponds to the g of x value of, of 10, so g of 7 is equal to 10. We found that g composed with f of 4 is equal to 10. If instead we want to find f composed with g of 4, well, we can rewrite that as f of g of 4, and again, work from the inside out. Now we're trying to find g of 4, so 4 is our x value, and we use our table of values for g to see that g of 4 is 1. So we replace g of 4 by 1, and now we need to evaluate f of 1. Using our table for f values, f of 1 is 8. Notice that when we've computed g of f of 4, we got a different answer than when we computed f of g of 4. And in general, g composed with f is not the same thing as f composed with g. Please pause the video and take a moment to compute the next two examples. We can replace f composed with f of 2 by the equivalent expression f of f of 2. Working from the inside out, we know that f of 2 is 3, and f of 3 is 6. If we want to find f composed with g of 6, rewrite that as f of g of 6. Using the table for g, g of 6 is 8. But f of 8, 8 is not on the table as an x value for the, for the f function. And so there is no f of 8. This does not exist. We can say that 6 is not in the domain for f composed with g. Even though it was in the domain of g, we couldn't follow all the way through and get a value for f composed with g of 6. Next, let's turn our attention to the composition of functions that are given by equations. p of x is x squared plus x, and q of x is negative 2x. We want to find q composed with p of 1. As usual, I can rewrite this as q of p of 1 and work from the inside out. 
P of one is one squared plus one, so that's two. So this is the same thing as Q of two, but Q of two is negative two times two, or negative four. So this evaluates to negative four. In this next example, we want to find Q composed of P of some arbitrary X. I'll rewrite it as usual as Q of P of X and work from the inside out. Well, P of X, we know the formula for that. That's X squared plus X. So I can replace my P of X with that expression. Now I'm stuck with evaluating Q on X squared plus X. Well, Q of anything is negative two times that thing. So Q of X squared plus X is gonna be negative two times the quantity X squared plus X. What I've done is I've substituted in the whole expression X squared plus X, where I saw the X in this formula for Q of X. It's important to use the parentheses here so that we'll be multiplying negative two by the whole expression and not just by the first piece. I can simplify this a bit as negative two X squared minus two X, and that's my expression for Q composed with P of X. Notice that if I wanted to compute Q composed with P of one, which I already did in the first problem, I could just use this expression now, negative two times one squared minus two, and I get negative four, just like I did before. Let's try another one. Let's try P composed with Q of X. First, I rewrite this, P of Q of X. Working from the inside out, I can replace Q of X with negative two X. So I need to compute P of negative two X. Here's my formula for P. To compute P of this expression, I need to plug in this expression everywhere I see an X in the formula for P. So that means negative two X squared plus negative two X. Again, being careful to use parentheses to make sure I plug in the entire expression in for X. Let me simplify. This is four X squared minus two X. Notice that I got different expressions for Q of P of X and for P of Q of X. Once again, we see that Q composed with P is not necessarily equal to P composed with Q. Please pause the video and try this last example yourself. Rewriting and working from the inside out, we can replace P of X with its expression X squared plus X, and then we need to evaluate P on X squared plus X. That means we plug in X squared plus X everywhere we see an X in this formula. So that's X squared plus X quantity squared plus X squared plus X. Once again, I can simplify by distributing out. That gives me X to the fourth plus two X cubed plus X squared plus X squared plus X, or X to the fourth plus two X cubed plus two X squared plus X. In this last set of examples, we're asked to go backwards. We're given a formula for a function of H of X, but we're supposed to rewrite H of X as a composition of two functions, F and G. Let's think for a minute, which of these two functions gets applied first? F composed with G of X, let's see, that means F of G of X. And since we evaluate these expressions from the inside out, we must be applying G first and then F. In order to figure out what, what F and G could be, I like to draw a box around some thing inside my expression for H. So I'm gonna draw a box around X squared plus seven. Then whatever's inside the box, that'll be my function G of X, the first function that gets applied. Whatever happens to the box, in this case, taking the square root sign, that becomes my outside function, my second function, F. So here, we're gonna say G of X is equal to X squared plus seven and f of x is equal to the square root of x. Let's just check and make sure that this works. So I need to check that when I take the composition, f composed with g, I need to get the same thing as my original h. 
So let's see. If I do f composed with g of x, well, by definition, that's f of g of x. Working from the inside out, I can replace g of x with its formula, x squared plus 7. So I need to evaluate f of x squared plus 7. That means I plug in x squared plus 7 into the formula for, for f. So that becomes the square root of x squared plus 7. Ta-da! It works because it matches my original equation. So we found a correct answer, a correct way of breaking h down as a composition of two functions. But I do want to point out this is not the only correct answer. I'll write down my formula for h of x again, and this time I'll put the box in a different place. I'll just box the x squared. If I did that, then my inside function, my first function, g of x, would be x squared. And my second function is what happens to the box. So my f of x is what happens to the box, and the box gets added 7 to it and taken the square root. So in other words, f of x is going to be the square root of x plus 7. Again, I can check that this works. If I do f composed with g of x, that's f of g of x. So now g of x is x squared, so I'm taking f of x squared. When I plug in x squared for x, I do in fact get the square root of x squared plus 7. So this is an alternative correct solution. In this video, we learned to evaluate the composition of functions by rewriting it and working from the inside out. We also learned to break apart a complicated function into a composition of two functions by boxing one piece of the function and letting the first function applied in the composition, let that be the inside of the box and the second function applied in the composition be whatever happens to the box.